Hello, I'm David Ruzik, Illinois Energy Product, and I'm here to tell you about something very exciting that could actually benefit people. When the pandemic started in March of 2020, a good friend and colleague of mine, Sanjitapanu Chanduri at UIC, said, hey, you make atmospheric pressure plasmas, do you think you could use them to sterilize something like N95 respirators? Then, in talking about this to my good friend and colleague, Brian Jerzyk at Starfire Industries, he said, you know, I bet you could even use a common microwave oven. Well, that night I went home and saw if I could make a plasma with the microwave oven and common household supplies so that this isn't something you have to buy, it's just something you have to do. After getting a plasma, the real key was does it really kill the viruses? So I found Professor Helen Wynn here at the University of Illinois. She, her students, and I have worked very hard the last few months in doing viral tests, doing filtration tests, doing fit tests, and showing that after this decontamination procedure, the viral load is down to the required levels, the biological indicators are passed, and the filtration and fit are not destroyed. So today, I am going to show you how you take common household materials, a microwave oven, and in 30 seconds can decontaminate an N95 respirator. The key is to make an antenna, and the antenna needs to be a multiple number of the wavelengths of a microwave oven. We're going to choose two. That works pretty well. And since the wavelength is 12.2 centimeters, 24.4 centimeters, about nine and five eighths inches is the amount that you want. And a metal coat hanger, unco uncoated, works great. Okay, uh, you could do it with any heavy gauge wire. Okay, now I'm going to try to bend this into a loop. Okay, I don't think the precise shape matters all that much, you know, but we're going to try to get it so these two ends nearly touch. We're making a split ring resonator. All right, so that looks pretty good. Sometimes I take the very ends here and bend them a little bit because the two ends I'm going to want to have touching a piece of ceramic. So let's try that and then get them just a little bit closer and bend it around. All right, we'll see if that's going to work. The gap here at the end, we want to be between, oh, well, say one and two millimeters, something like that. What you need next is a ceramic holder. And I have found that a coffee cup works very well. I'm going to turn the coffee cup upside down. And we're going to suspend this. And so sometimes you need a second coffee cup. Okay. Here. And I'm going to put this kind of sitting like that. Key is that to be able to make a plasma, I'm going to need to add a conducting fluid. And saline solution is an excellent and easily available one. We used a milliliter when we wrote up the paper, you know, not probably too precise. The other key is that to get the right radicals that will kill a lot of the viruses, we use 30% hydrogen peroxide. This isn't the stuff you get at Walmart, but it is available. I've used it for cool supplies, use it for electronics. I've poured some of this in here. And again, something around one milliliter, which is a teaspoon. Okay, I'm going to put on there. All right. Now, I need to put this in the microwave. So, after you've done it the first time, you probably just squirt the stuff into the microwave. It's important to disable the rotation. We don't want this to rotate. And I found the easiest way to do that is to just take the big tray and turn it upside down. Okay? Now let's put our cup of solution in here. 
<laughs> when you look at a microwave oven, you often see this panel on the side. That's where the microwaves come out. And um, we want to have this fairly close to where the microwaves come out. At least that seems to work better. This is my uh, other cuff, which is just really to support the antenna. And then I put the antenna there, making sure the liquid ends are, are near each other. I'm just going to get them a little closer. Okay. And that both of those ends are in the liquid and touching the cup. You might say, where do you put the mask? Well, the plasma makes radicals. It makes uh, UV, uh, ultraviolet radiation. It makes a whole bunch of stuff that's responsible for killing things. And so we have found that if we suspend the mask somewhere up here near the top, and you can't see, but let me see if I got it taped there. All right. You don't maybe want it right over the plasma, because the plasma flares up a bit, but um, somewhere where I could see the plasma. So that's probably going to work. Now we're ready to make a plasma. So we uh, want to turn this on, say full power, uh, at normal operation. I'm going to put it on for a minute. Hit start. At first, you'll hear some popping sounds as the first liquid starts boiling away. Usually takes about 10 seconds. There we go. We're starting to see little flashes. When we get it to where most of the liquid is boiled away, we should go into a sustained plasma mode, which we've done right here. You want the sustained plasma to last for 30 seconds. It was about at 36 or 40 when it started. So we will take this down to um, oh, about uh, six. All right. Sometimes the plasma sputters off like that, but that's all right. We're making our UV radiation, we're making our ions and our electrons, and 30 seconds integrated of this beautiful steady state plasma is enough to do it. Well, that was really cool. It was the first time and it worked. And if we try it again, chances are it will work. But one of these times you're going to do this and you're not going to get the plasma. You're going to say, hey, Professor Ruzik, you never taught me about that. So there's a couple common failure modes, okay? One is that at some point this thing gets all gunked up with salt. Rinse it off. Sometimes that metal actually melts together into a little blob. Trim off the very edge of it, all right? That seems to help. Other times it's just managing to get that gap to be about right. All right, so sometimes you've got to play with the gap a little bit. Uh, those are the things that I've tried. Um, after uh, many, many uses, I've had a coffee cup actually crack. And if it can't hold the liquid anymore, well, got to have another coffee cup. All right? So those are some of the common failure modes. Now, the two coffee cup approach seems to work great. We also had a 3D printed plastic holder an antenna holder. Now, since you saw this get red hot, you can see that I need to put a ceramic. And this holder is designed so just a standard two inch ceramic, two by two inch ceramic tile. You can get it any Menards, fits right in there. And then this holder is designed to nicely hold your antenna um, up in position. We will give away the plans for this 3D printed holder for free. So if you have a 3D printer, you can just print one. I'm not trying to sell this stuff. You can see the antenna it holds it a little bit better. And if I stick this in that kind of same spot, and again, make sure the two ends are, are touching the ceramic. This gives you a bit more room to maybe hang a couple more masks in there. And now, We'll put our squirt of saline on there, and we'll add our uh, hydrogen peroxide. Okay. Okay. Always a good idea to wear safety glasses, or at least some kind of glasses, which I'm doing. Now we'll try to see what happens with the 3D printed holder. I'll get one minute, Go. and hit start. 
There we go. A couple of snaps. That means the uh, some of the liquid to go away, and there we have started a plasma. And we can keep this plasma going for 30 seconds. Um, it looks like there's some, maybe some stuff from the ceramic, like the glaze, might be burning off a little bit. All right. But we have a fairly impressive plasma going. All right. You can tell when you have a plasma. Good shot. All right, let's hit stop. If we look inside, we can see that, oh, looks like we've melted one end of our antenna away. Remember, it's a coat hanger. You got plenty of coat hangers. Just bend it again. Uh, but our holder seems to have survived. It's the ceramic part that was uh, touching the very, very hot antenna. And the plasma you saw is certainly capable of making all of the radicals, all the electrons, the ions, the negative ions, the electrons, the OH radicals, the ozone, and the UV radiation that is all used and needed to be able to render the viruses down to a much less harmful level. So whether you want to use coffee mugs or you want to use a printed 3D holder, you can turn a microwave oven into a mask sterilization unit. And now for some disclaimers. If you have a lot of N95 masks and you know yours is contaminated, throw it away. The procedure we've talked about is for emergency use. No other way to decontaminate it. You know it's decontamination, you suspect, and you want to go do this and do it in a short period of time. I want to add a few practical safety tips. You only need to do it for 30 seconds. It's passed all of the decontamination tests. If you say, well, 30 seconds was good, let me do it for 60. Remember, this metal nose band here will get warm. And if you expose it for too long, it will melt the mask and, of course, then render the mask not as useful. So, 30 seconds. And if you have to do it several times because the plasma isn't working, just make sure when you put it in that this is cooled off already. The second thing is the antenna. It gets very hot. Don't touch it. And the cups themselves, especially the tops of the cups, they can get very hot. Make sure they're cool before you touch them. We've put in 30% hydrogen peroxide, which is uh, pretty strong stuff, okay? So that vapor from the hydrogen peroxide might condense on the other surfaces, and if you reach in there and touch it, not only might you hurt yourself because it's hot, you might actually get some of that hydrogen peroxide on yourself. You noticed I was wearing gloves, I think in most hospital type setting, that's a very safe and sound practice to use. You may have seen little tiny bits of metal flying off. That can happen, all right? Um, it won't happen when the microwave is off. It's always a great idea to wear safety glasses or some kind of glasses to protect your eyes. Now, what about things that can't really hurt you? We've been using microwave ovens for a long time, and the door on the microwave oven stops the microwaves from coming out. The oven only operates when the door is closed. So having the door closed, you have nothing to worry about the microwaves. You have nothing to worry about the UV radiation because the glass on the side of the microwave blocks the UV. In terms of the radicals that we're making, the ions, the OH radicals, those things are short-lived, and the plasma's off, they're gone. Gases like ozone certainly are being made. You may even be able to smell it if you're in tune with what that smells like. If you ever go to a beach on a hot sunny day, you can smell ozone. So is the level that we make, you know, toxic? No, but I wouldn't just go to the vent of the microwave oven and sit there and take real big deep breaths during this whole process, right? Just sort of kind of common sense type things. So that is sort of the end of this little group of disclaimers. And now you have everything you need to know about turning a microwave oven 
into an N95 respirator decontamination unit. The University of Illinois is publishing the accompanying preliminary results of research content from faculty and employees of the University of Illinois, individually, author, or collectively authors. This publication only applies to the content provided here and does not apply to any other information, products, publications, or services of the authors. The content is being released in this manner to maximize the potential public benefit during the SARS-CoV-2, also known as COVID-19, pandemic. The content has not been reviewed or approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA. Interested readers are encouraged to contact the FDA and review available FDA materials. Please note, the content has not been peer-reviewed yet. The authors make no representations or warranties of any kind, expressed or implied, relating to accuracy, safety, usefulness, usability, marketability, performance, or otherwise of the content released here. The authors disclaim all expressed and implied warranties of merchantability and fitness of the content for a particular purpose, and disclaim all expressed and implied warranties regarding non-infringement of any patent, copyright, trademark, or other rights of third parties in content or use of the content, or in making, using, or selling products or services by any person or entity. People or entities attempting to use this content in any way, including creating products or offering services, assume all risk and responsibility related to those uses, including all legal and regulatory compliance, safety, efficacy, performance, design, marketability, title, and quality. The authors assume no liability related to the actions of third parties and in respect of any infringement of any patent, copyright, or other rights of third parties. This content has not been used in testing with humans at this time. The author's names and logos are trademarks or other exclusive property of the authors. Readers of the content shall not use the name or logo of any author in any way for publicity, advertising, or other commercial purposes, including linked to the reader's products or services. Readers of the content shall not make statements or representations that, in author's sole judgment, deliberately or inadvertently claim, suggest, or give the appearance or impression of a relationship with or an endorsement by that author.